Okay, so I've marked out the holes uh, for the servos in the wing and I just laid down a length of clear packing tape over the foam first uh, to scribble on so that I didn't get red ink all over the foam. Um, I'm not sure that's necessary because I'll end up covering it, but uh, I did it anyway. One of the uh, benefits of playing around with the servos earlier was that I uh, discovered the need to have the two flap servos looking in the same direction because I'll be using a, a Y harness and uh, I'm glad I didn't make that mistake because uh, I probably would have rushed headlong into having the two uh, servos on each side looking outward so you, as you can see here um, on this uh, end of the wing uh, I've got the uh, aileron servo facing outward and the flaps servo facing inboard and here's the other uh, flap servo here looking outward and outward again for the aileron so I've got three three facing in one direction and this one uh, flap servo facing inboard so uh, the other thing just before we move on is to show you my high-tech uh, measuring device for my X-Acto knife so I know how deep to go and this will prevent me from uh, cutting deeper than necessary into the foam so as you can see it's just a piece of masking tape uh, onto the X-Acto blade and that'll guide the depth of my cut. Okay so uh, two down and two to go well so far this is going quite well I'm rather pleased with the way it's turning out um, I added an extra width of uh, packing tape so that I could trace the outline or the cut line rather for the servo wires and the intent behind that is that when I'm finished I'll just peel the tape off and all of my chicken scratching will have disappeared. The uh, holes for the servos uh, went really well. Just used my little template, uh, cut the outline, uh, made a bunch of slashes back and forth like miniature ice cubes, picked them out and uh, it's a piece of cake. The foam cut just as easy as the test piece that I did and I'm pretty happy about that so uh, we'll get these other two done and well I'm happy to report that the tedious little job of digging out the holes for these servos is now complete the four servos are in the wing I've embedded the servo wires into the wing and now it's on to the task of installing the control horns and fabricating some push rods so I'll join you um, as soon as that's done and we'll see how it looks well as you can see most of the hard work on the wing is now complete the servos are in, the control horns are on, the control rods have been made up, the wiring's all in and it's, I've tested it on the plane and everything works as it should. So we're pretty much good to go. All that's really left is to use a little bit of a corner coat to cover over the servos, the wiring and the spar uh, to make it look good from 50,000 feet uh, where it'll look just fine. And uh, I'm pretty excited about getting this thing into the air as soon as I can. The parts I've used for the control rods and the clevises and the control horns are from Park Zone. They're just um, the standard um, part that you'd find on your Trojan or most of your other Park Zone foam warbirds. And uh, the only reason I went with these is because it, uh, I was familiar with them and they're just very easy to work with. The little bit of uh, learning I had on this exercise was how good or how easy it is to make these uh, Z-bends or Z-bends um, by the use of a $12 set of Z-bed or Z-bend pliers and as you can see the jaws are shaped so that all you have to do is put the rod in and where you want to make your bend put that point at the first jag give them a squeeze and you're done and it makes a perfect bend that's repeatable and everyone is just perfect and it's way better than sliced bread and I know if you've ever tried to make a z-bend with sliced bread it's uh, it can be difficult so that's it for now I'm going to uh, see you in the next segment where hopefully we'll be a little bit closer to getting this uh, this bird in the air here's a last look at the inside of the fuse before we button this up you can see the 3S 2200 LiPo sitting vertically in the battery compartment there's uh, a little bit of room to move the battery fore and aft depending on what size foam spacers you uh, use. I put the foam in there uh, to cushion the battery as much as anything but it also serves to space it fore and aft. You can see the servos in place down in the well and 
The receiver, I installed it on a piece of Velcro just so it made it easier to plug the connections in and, and remove them if necessary. A little bit easier on my old eyes than to try and look sideways into the, uh, into the fuse. So it's just a question of ripping it out and having much easier access to it. So pretty straightforward, not a lot of uh, not a lot of magic here. So uh, with that, we'll get on with the rest. Well, of the, the old girl's starting to look like uh, like a plane now. Now that the wing's on, um, aside from having to make some adjustments to the landing gear so that the uh, wheels are pointing in the correct direction and they've got the right amount of toe in, um, just about ready to take it up into the air. A couple of final tweaks, and I think we're good to go. So as you can see, we now have ailerons. Of course, the elevator. And then we've got our flaps going, which I'm kind of excited to use. I still have to work out the uh, mixing on the DX7. And then, uh, of course, your rudder with the steerable uh, rear wheel. That's nothing new. But uh, she's come a long way from her nickel metal hydrate brushed motor days, and uh, hopefully it's going to perform as, as, uh, as expected. So pretty excited about that. The wing you'll see I managed to salvage the original decals I just peeled them off and stuck them back on so they should be good for at least 23 miles an hour when they'll all come flying off but uh, we'll have to wait and see and you can see that I put one coat of econo coat covering over the channel that was dug out for the spar so that dressed it up a little bit and got rid of that, uh, that ugly scar and then on the belly pretty much the same thing uh, along the wings, just a, a thin uh, a width of a cone coat over the um, servo wires and covered over the servos and put the original underwing stripes back on. Uh, modifications to the battery box are all done. Um, prop choice right now is uh, one that I'm going to experiment with. It's a fairly popular choice and that's the uh, prop off a Trojan T28 from Park Zone. It's, uh, it seems quite popular on the internet, so I thought I'd give it a try. I've got a handful of different props I'm going to take out to the uh, field with me when I go, but I'm going to run this on an amp gauge.